thing that really matters is when you make an idea real. Okay, now a lot of you are gonna go, no, my ideas are a billion dollar idea. They're great, they're amazing ideas. They may be, but they are completely without value unless you make them real. So you're in the Microsoft garage. This is what we do here every day. We take ideas and we figure out how to move them forward in some way. And so what Maxim would love us to talk about is how you go from that initial idea and actually make it real. Mm -hmm. Sound, is this interesting at all? Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, wait, I, I kind of wanted to go and get pizza, but no, <laughs> we're gonna do this? Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll start. When, when someone comes into the garage and they wanna take their idea and make it real, the very first thing I do with them is ask them, what does it actually look like when it's done? I mean, in whatever form, it could be an idea about helping the community, it can be an idea about a new technology, a new process, it doesn't matter. I ask them to go from the beginning where they are right now and fast forward all the way into the future so they can visualize what this might actually feel like, be like, and do for people. And once we do that little exercise, it actually gets a lot easier to figure out how to get there. I am not a big fan of what I call incremental innovation, right? Or trying to go step by step until you get somewhere. I think that's ridiculous, you're not gonna get anywhere. You can do it, and we have to do it sometimes. But if you really wanna take your idea and go quickly to the point where you can do something with it, you have to figure out how to leap, rather than going incrementally. So that's, that's sort of my stance, and that's what I try to teach people here in the garage, is that you've gotta imagine, visualize where you wanna go, and then just try to leap there. Right, figure out what is the chasm you have to cross? What is the technology you have to invent? What are the people you need to meet? Where's the money you need to like? You have to figure that out. But if you try to do it step by step by step, and I know this is, sounds ridiculous, right? Because you've been taught your whole life, one foot in front of the other, take it step by step. No, the world is about going fast now, okay? And nothing is gonna protect your idea except going fast, nothing. Your NDA is not gonna protect your idea. Even your patents are not gonna protect your idea. You have to learn how to take your idea and make it real as fast as possible. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, all right. So with that, how would you like to say that, that you like to approach this? Yes, yeah, so can everybody hear me or is this better? No, we need for the recording. Okay, all right. So I love what you're saying about moving fast. That okay, wait, no, you're gonna disagree with me, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going to bring up a totally different idea and perspective, but I was okay. going to say I love what you're saying about going fast, okay. and I fully concur with that as well. And as I think about bringing ideas to life, it's really the idea of manifestation, taking what you have in your heart and mind and bringing it into reality. And I've been playing with this manifestation concept for a while, and I see manifestation as having two primary directives a masculine principle of manifesting and a feminine principle of manifesting. And obviously, we all know that we all have feminine and masculine elements and that you know we all are fluid and dynamic, et cetera, but like, just bear with me for this. So the masculine principle of manifesting is when we are goal-oriented and very direct. We're like, I want this, and I'm gonna go and work really, really hard to make it happen. I'm gonna overcome all obstacles, I'm gonna overcome the challenges, and I'm gonna be very deliberate, intentional. And that's actually, for many of us, how we've manifested things our whole lives working really hard, setting a goal, and moving forward towards the goal. Mm -hmm. There is a different principle for manifesting that you can also employ alongside this one, and that's more the feminine principle of manifesting. That's the principle where rather than going out and doing, 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 it's more focused on the concept of being. And being mm -hmm. is doing whatever you need to do to be in joy and increasing your vibrational frequency to a high level to match whatever it is that you are seeking to manifest, whether it's an idea, a relationship, a baby, whatever it is that you want to become a match vibrationally for that. And you do that through being in joy and bringing into your life experiences, people, opportunities that are gonna raise your vibrational frequency. So essentially, the feminine way of manifesting is about being. It's a much more magnetic form of manifesting where you become a magnet for what you are trying to draw into your life. It's really based on the process of receiving and also, whereas you know the first masculine principle is more about creating or co-creating, about doing doing and co-creating versus being and receiving. And there's also in the feminine principle, a surrender element, often a surrender to the divine or to the flow of life or whatever that means to you, but realizing that you're not alone and that the universe and the world supports you in that. So 
In, as I've gotten older, I've tried to do things more in the feminine way of manifesting, whereas the beginning of my life was primarily more in the masculine way of manifesting. Mm -hmm. So this is my two cents on that subject. Wow, I'd, I would call that the, the caveman principle. <laughs> How would you bring ideas to life? Uh, I, I, I try to assemble a team. I, I find it's just too difficult to do these things on your own. Mm -hmm. So whether that team involves an agent or a producer or a lawyer or a co-producer or a partner or a sponsor, it's very important to have a team. It just makes things easier. Um, and on that team, there needs to be somebody, certainly in the case of film, that can speak to the big agencies and distributors and get their phone calls returned. There's got to be somebody like that for a film. For books... Wow, it's just making sure there's, a, in all these things, it's making sure there's a niche. There's, in other words, if you go to a bookstore, is there room for your book or have there been five other books similar? Same thing with film and TV. Is it, it needs to be distinctive. It needs to be distinctive. And you got to try to attract as many uh, impressive names as you can on your team. And that's a big function of success in publishing, TV, and film. Love that. Do I really Mark? need this? <laughs> yes, I do, Mark. <laughs> okay, you can buy the tape. All right. Is this, I'm not used to this. All right, there's a couple of things. You, I believe you have to take, you have to know um, to take the steps so you can teach others. And, you know, it's a, to me, it's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, I got into the, the film business first time. You need a team, real estate, uh, my garmento. By the time I tell you, I could have done it myself. That was my attitude. <laughs> now, I'm blessed that I can find all these people that, oh, I can't say it, all, all the people that have the passion and they got pooped on, okay? And um, that's a, that's just a lot of good talent out there. And there's a lot of bad talent too. There's a lot, this business is, it's people BSing themselves, okay? And they're living that thing. Go to LA if you want, you don't believe me. Okay? <laughs> so, so the, um, and that I believe women are superior. So that's his story, okay? So, um, and I'm a big advocate and it's disgusting how bad, or, you know, you think about it. Now, the, this is the first time I'm doing this and how I got into the business is I lost, I did everything you could do here in the city for real estate, okay? The go-to guy. Uh, and um, for, I didn't cheat, I didn't, uh, it is what it is, and I kept working, okay? And I paid myself by the hour, in my mind. I started out at 50 bucks an hour, in my mind. <laughs> but the thing is, there were pe pe people, and they don't build on themselves, they just do something and sit back and relax. Hey, that can happen, you know? So, so um, I'm doing a brand, movies. I could have do horror. I find that the industry, they got enough of the people and um, they don't understand. You can buy a pair of shorts at Kmart and you can also get one at Saks and you can wear them both. But they, um, I guess these guys think their flies open. I don't know. So I'm doing, it's a pretty easy concept that I'll share with you. But wait, but wait Mark, I gotta ask you. So the, the point of this is that you're saying that it's the talent, right? And that knowing yourself that, that you can do You have to right? know yourself. The mind is very strong and you can't beat <laughs> yourself up, okay? Mm -hmm. And actually your mind does beat, you know, you, you can stop breathing, your mind tells you that. Um, the, um, the important thing is I'm branding prejudice, comes from ignorance. And I could get stories all day long. Well, we will get to those, but I, but I, gotta, I gotta keep moving, okay? Because we, we only have a short amount of time. You but let me, let me just recap. So I said, gotta go fast. Your point was to be more, a little more enlightened, right? Like sort of just be, like understand what you have to work with and work with that. Your point was go build a team. You're not gonna do it yourself, right? And, it's and then, harder. Yeah. And Mark's point, I think, is... And I didn't hear you. I listened, though. Ah. Uh, 
No. Okay. So now I'm going to ask each of you again, of, of all the things that we just talked about, what is the hardest part of making an idea real? Rejection, rejection, rejection. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, if you're not, if you want to be creative and succeed, you have to learn how to overcome rejection, negativity. <laughs> People are very negative and assholes. There's a lot of them. <laughs> so you got to realize that this is what you're going to encounter. This is this is the norm. <laughs> and how will you overcome with it? How will you cope with rejection? You should understand that rejections happen to everyone. Everyone you know who succeeded had to deal with literally hundreds and, or thousands of rejections, particularly writers and actors and directors. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to figure out a way to overcome that and not take it personally. You have to have thick skin and keep on going. Don't let people discourage you. Don't discourage yourself. Just keep on going, and you're not going to go know everything. You don't know everything. So I started, for example, I started a uh, web series called lifeadvice.tv. Check it out. Basically, I just had this crazy idea. It's, it's anti, I know it's America, but it's anti-rich and famous. Just interviewing old people based on their life experience. They live longer than most. And to give us advice, whether it's romantic, business, about parenting, family, love, whatever the advice is. And I made little short two to three minute things. And so right now, uh, I didn't know everything. I, I, I partnered with an amazing guy, Rosan Duka from Bulgaria, and he's a tech expert. And together, we're forging ahead trying to find sponsors, lifeadvice.tv, check it out. That was just a crazy idea I had. I, I, I just felt that people based on their experience of life, on their how old they are, could give us some advice. And I did it. So it's about, I, I shot a bunch of uh, interviews, maybe 80. I picked 15, the best ones, and it's on, it's on the web, it's on everywhere. And right now we're trying to monetize it. Right. So uh, you just have to go out there. You're not gonna go know the answer of every question. Get people involved who know the answers of the questions you don't know. Yeah. What's, what's the hardest part? Yeah, so I have a different answer, and I know a lot of people are speaking about film, but I want to talk about manifesting any idea in your life, whether it be a new career, a new relationship, a new home, a film, funding for a project, etc. And I think the most difficult part is oftentimes we could be so attached to wanting something that it actually impedes our getting it. And so I think the antidote to that is actually detachment, neutrality, and having some form of equanimity about how things manifest. So I have, uh, so I'm a psychiatrist, right? And I treat a lot of people seeking to manifest a lot of things. I'm also an executive coach, and I seek a lot of business. I, I, I work with a lot of business leaders seeking to manifest a lot of things. <laughs> their bonuses, mostly. Yeah, it, including their bonuses, <laughs> including many other things, and. I often see these really powerful people wanting something so, so badly and that they're so attached to the outcome, they actually don't let it come in. That happens too. We can want something so badly that we're actually impeding ourselves. And so when we want something, it's important to want it, to be deliberate, to you know have both the masculine and feminine manifestation principles, to be deliberate but also be receiving, but at the same time also let it go and thereby let it come in. Because it might come in a little differently than you expect. It might come in through a different door, in a different shape, and have a much greater outcome than you can imagine. Sometimes we keep ourselves stuck in smallness by thinking that we know how something's supposed to manifest, and we keep the big things from coming in. Wow. That was a good one. I, I like that. OK, so Mark. Uh, you want what's, me to finish it up? Yeah, uh, what's, what's the uh, hardest, real quick. Part, yeah, hardest part of making uh, your idea real? If money's your God, you're not going to make it. Money's a tool. But it's earned. You, have to, you can't look at it like that. And trust me, uh, I wasn't born old. So truth to yourself will be your guiding. And uh, if, you, if you think you're passionate and you do something else, you're not going to make the money. And you can try that, test it. The, uh, the, uh, you can't lie to yourself. Be real. And uh, if somebody doesn't call me back, huh, <laughs> they get a balloon. Everybody in the office says, oh, wow, it's your birthday. Uh, and uh, whatever. 
It says, uh, call me back <laughs> or I'll send an elephant. <laughs> Very good. So uh, I, I find here in the garage, uh, when I deal with a lot of teams coming in, the hardest part about making their idea real is they don't have the right idea. Everybody's head is stuck in their to-do list, right? It's, well, I've got to get this done. It's urgent. My boss is calling me. I, I can't do this. They're not taking the time, like, as you were saying, to sort of step back and figure out what are the, what are the more impactful ideas. And I always ask people that come to the garage this very simple question. If you could do anything you wanted to do, what would have the most impact? Which is a very different question than their boss would ask them or, or their boss's boss, right? Usually it's, okay, like, what are you going to do because we have this plan and we have to execute? How are we going to do this? Not, are we doing the right thing? You know, are we, and that's what happens when you step back and you sort of reconsider of all the things we're doing, what would actually move the needle for, for what the most important thing that we're doing is supposed to be? So that's what I find is the hardest part, is people get stuck maybe in smaller ideas or um, things that are they're important, but they're not impactful. And knowing the right thing to actually focus on, I find to be the hardest for teams. So I think uh, uh, often ideas change, and you have to be open to that. I mean, if you look at all the famous companies, Uber, Airbnb, all those kind of, they, most of them pivoted at some point from their initial business plan. They pivoted. It's the same thing in the arts and entertainment. I mean, you know, uh, a screenplay is a really hard thing to write. A gr it's easy to write. It's hard to write a really good one. And, you know, you may need to change things. And that's why rewriting is so important in any form of writing. Mm -hmm. So ideas change, but it's about being open to that change. Okay, but wait, 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 wait. I'm an artist. You know, I, I can't change. You know, I can't compromise my vision. Are, are you kidding? Come on. Well, unless you're a, if you're a fine artist, I get it. But any other kind of entertainment uh, artist, you're going to be you're, you're going to need to change. Generally speaking, you're not. It's not going to be a brilliant screenplay at the first draft. Right. It's not going to be a brilliant idea, TV idea. Is that is you that compromising, to, you, or is it just reality? It's just reality. You, it, 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 if it, all the artists that I know that said I, I don't compromise, I'm, it's my art. None of them made it. None of them. <laughs> none, of them made, none of them succeeded in. Forget about giant success. Just in paying the bills with their art. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a little bit flexible. It's okay to create things in a vacuum, but generally speaking, the people who succeed are people who don't create things in a vacuum. They see what the market for their craft is asking for and feeds it, feed it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. And I think that there's an interesting process people go through as they come up with the great idea for what it is that they truly want in their life. And I notice this with all of my coaching clients, it's a three-step progression. It's like an iteration. The first step is, you know, you ask them, what do you want? And first they tell you what they don't want. It's not that they're even meaning to tell you that, but that's just what comes out. I would like my life to be different in these 20 categories in all of these ways. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. So that's step one. Now, step two is what they do want. So they start to turn that on its head. What do you actually want? And then step three is what's the best that you can imagine for yourself. And it's that three-step progression that I think is a similar progression as to how we can get to the best idea from lack to, you know, fullness to abundance. Okay, wait. So you said when you ask someone, mm -hmm. what do they want? The first thing they say is what they don't want. You can't help, but like, if I were to ask you, Mike, what in your relationship would you like different? Everything. Okay, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> so you could, exactly, so right there, so you tell me all the things that you don't want, and then you're like, well, here's how I would like it. But if I were to imagine the best for myself in a relationship, here's what it would look like. So you actually have to coach people to open their mind in that way and start to think about things in that way. Okay, I'm gonna give you a call here. We got, we got, <laughs> we got things to talk about. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna change things up just a little bit. I'm gonna ask the audience, what do you think is the hardest thing about taking an idea and making it real? And just, just blurt it out. So, or stand up, yeah. If you're gonna, you're gonna say something, stand up. Courage. No, you didn't stand up. <laughs> the grind. The grind. Courage. No, no, stand up, please. I, I just want to ask you, why do you think courage is the hardest thing? 
the, de the gremlins that live in our own brain are the strongest gremlins on Earth, right? So you have to have the courage to fight your own gremlins, and then you have to be able to block out all the negativity that might come at you by people who are fighting their own gremlins because they're jealous that you have an idea, and they're, they're, they're projecting on you that I'm not doing the thing I really want to be doing. I don't want to see you succeed by doing that. And that's not everybody. You'll have, your, you'll have your people who are cheerleaders and supporters and all that, but you have to be courageous enough to kill your own gremlins and understand that people who are coming at you, if they're not being constructive and helping you reform your idea into the best it can be, mm -hmm. they're just being negative, it's probably a projection and not really about the idea. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Not knowing how you will do it. So you have the idea, I'm going to write the screenplay, I'm going to write the book, but I don't know how to write a book. I've mm -hmm. never written a book before. I don't know the publishing industry. So with my clients, I will say to them, don't worry about the how. Let's figure out the what and the why. Mm -hmm. Anyone can figure out the how. But that's where we always go first. And yeah. we stop many a good idea. Okay, so, so not knowing stops them in their tracks. Not knowing how to do it. Not knowing so. how. Interesting. Yes. So wait, you got to stand up. Come on, we're all friends here. It's okay. Uh, the process and why are you doing something? Accepting the criticism. Why accepting the criticism. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Because your your you know your inside voice is saying, yeah, no, yeah. you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard that before? Mark? <laughs> yeah, I mean the gremlins. Why you, you know who's opening the door to them? You can recognize them, and and you can also tell. Exactly what you're doing to anybody you know, and that can implement it. Okay. Yeah. And don't just Jeff? I'd say the grind because uh, you know, every day you gotta push for what you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you wake up in the morning and you've gotta be ready to go and just push, mm -hmm. push, push. All yeah. day long, all night long. All right. It's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, like the, it's the grind. Yeah, it is exhausting. And being a chef, you would know it is exhausting. It's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, being let down by others. You know that you can't do everything by yourself, but then who do you trust? Uh, yeah, yeah. And even if you do trust them, you're still going to watch them like a hawk, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yes. Uh, procrastination, just starting it. That's it. Uh, procrastination, yeah. Well, there's the flip side, right, to making it. And we were talking about this earlier. I find that to make something real, I have to procrastinate until the last possible second, and then I will do my best work when I have no more time left. And there's actually a book that I read years ago <laughs> called Gut Instinct that actually studied this phenomenon where if you give an expert too much time, they will not do as good of a job as if you give them almost no time. Because then their, their instinct and their experience and, and what they know how to do, their skill, kind of like turns on like a light switch. So there's something interesting about if you want to make your idea real, wait until you have to do it. And then you will do it. Like, you know, or do you just time box yourself, right? And say, look, I've got 15 minutes. I'm going to do this right now and just do it. Yeah, I completely agree with that as well. And I think that we all have natural rhythms and mm -hmm. we have to go with our natural rhythms. Sometimes we're more creative. Sometimes we're more about doing the grind. And so if you need to be creative, then as soon as you're creative, you go and write and do your stream of consciousness writing. And if you need to do more things that are deliberate and task oriented, you do that. And so I think it's just mm -hmm. really like knowing yourself and thereby being so efficient as to how you use your time and for what mental function you use it. Yeah, that, I would call that being lazy, but that's just I, me. I, I, have, I, have a, I have a bunch of entertainment career coaching clients and production consulting clients and executive clients. and. There's usually one or two barriers that are stopping them. So you got to really figure out what's stopping you. What, what are the barriers that you, is it you don't want to compete with other people? Is it you don't feel you're good enough? Uh, you have a fear of success or failure? But it's usually one or two fears or obstacles that one has to overcome. It's not, it's not rocket science. Oh, I like that. Okay, so if we were going to take an idea and try to make it real as fast as possible, how would you approach that? So let's just, you know, yeah, I told you how I would approach it. How would you approach making an idea uh, come, you know, become real as fast as possible? Yeah. If I were to do that, I would, number one, figure out 
A, a, B, C, D, all the steps. I know that we're trying to get to the idea as mm -hmm. fast as possible, but mm -hmm. I nevertheless figure out the 20 steps and, and start to start with step one right away and try to get as many people on board to do the other steps that I don't have to, uh -huh. to get my team together. And at the same time, do the feminine principle, which is start to envision what it is that I'm trying to manifest and start to feel like it's already here and draw that in and magnetize that in through the vibration of that, through kind of trying to equate to the vibration of that. Um, and yeah, I would do a two-tier approach. Excellent. Oh, but I was just asking. So, if, <laughs> we, we, if, if we had to take, <laughs> if we had to take an idea and make it real as fast as possible. How would you approach that? Because you talked about uh, forming a team earlier. So, but what's the process you would use? Excuse me, I don't know. What... Is that it's the studio calling, right? Exactly. Not, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, God, I, I've never had. I don't think I've made a film. I've made six films. I don't, I don't think I've made a film where I had proper pre-production time. It was always some manic, insane situation where I had a crew up in a week <laughs> and, and cast and crew in like a week or two. Uh, so there's something to be said for last minute mm -hmm. uh, Basically, you just have to push it every day, every day, and have deadlines have deadlines and figure out if you need anybody in your team to do something you can't. And if that means understanding the business better, if that means understanding your primary contacts who can hire you, invest in you, or represent you, then you're gonna to need to somebody on your team who knows those people. Mm -hmm. And you just keep on, you can just keep on pushing. Um, you know, this life advice, dot TV idea I told you. At some point I said, all right, I'm gonna hire a, a I'm not a line producer, I'm a producer, executive producer, but not a line producer. I said, I'm gonna hire a line producer and we're gonna go to nursing homes and senior citizen centers and interview a bunch of people. And we just scheduled it, made it happen, and now it's on, you know, it's in 20 languages. Yeah, and if you had asked somebody if that was a good idea, they would have said, what? What? You encounter so much negativity when you ask people permission. Mm -hmm. Fuck permission. Just go ahead and do it. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't use them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> All right, real quick. Um, I could say a whole lot, but what I do, I lay my head down, and, the only, and what I say is to be a better person when I wait. I'm huh? a bad person. It keeps me grounded. Mm -hmm. So that was that uh, when I wake, that's the present. When I went to sleep, now it's the past. Yeah. So okay. so just be thankful, right? It keeps me grounded. That's what the most mm -hmm. important. Okay. In my business, whether I'm an actor, it's product. It's a product. Okay. And you do the best with it. Mm -hmm. I can say by cleaning <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to end with one thing that I think is really important for all of us. You came in this morning, maybe not expecting what happened today, right? So there was an idea, like Maxim had an idea years ago, to have a conference about just talking about creativity. I'm just curious, did you experience, did you learn more about creativity today, or did you learn more about something else? What, was it about creativity? There's a lot of life lessons in there, too. Life? Okay. okay. See, Maxim, you're a failure. Sorry. <laughs> it was all life lessons, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was yeah. tape delay. But, but you know what? I'm like listening to our panelists talk about how to make an idea real. I, I'm reminded that creativity is about life. It is a bunch of life lessons, right, that you apply to taking your passion and, and whatever it is you have and making stuff real. So yes, you can be creative for the sake of being creative, uh, but most of us are trying to do something uh, better you know, or good in the world and there's a lot of lessons to be learned by that.